Okay, this one says, um, how has it been working with a female boss? Have you ever had a female boss? Yes, I have. How has it been working with a female <laughs> boss? Like I said, these are random questions. They might not make sense, but they are random questions. <laughs> I feel like somebody deliberately asked me to ask that question. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Brand On Demand, brand on demand. the only podcast dedicated to creative entrepreneurs and helping them grow their brands with your host, Brand Guy Mikey. Without further ado, um, welcome once again. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure <laughs> to be here once again. Yes. Yeah, so uh, before we go into um, you know the discussion for today, hmm. developing your personal and professional uh, self yeah. with Toastmasters in Ghana. Mm-hmm. First of all, I'd like you to share a little backstory about how you discovered Toastmaster yourself. Cool. Cool. All right. I think just going all the way back. Mm. So growing up. I think like most Ghanaians, I grew up in a household where you are taught to be humble, to be quiet, to only speak when you're spoken to or only when you have something positive to say. Right. So you don't talk back to elders. And Mm -hmm. I think that in that upbringing, I became a bit more reserved. Right. And I think that for most of us, we take that to mean respect and to show humility. Right. But when you get into the point where you now need to be more expressive in order to get ahead in your career you begin to realize how much that holds you back right so before getting to this level i began to realize that i was comfortable talking with friends with people that i knew but every time it was in a setting even such as this where it was more formal you need to be more expressive Mm. i was struggling Mm. and after you go to secondary school you begin to overcome it a little bit university because of the whole friends boys boys yeah. but eventually when i transitioned into my career i began to realize that it was really holding me back right a lot of the people that you see getting promoted are not necessarily the most hardworking or the smartest <laughs> they tend to yeah. be the, the the most outspoken the mm. people who will put their hand up in meetings the people who will argue back and talk yeah. back and and i realized that as much as i knew about what i was doing I did not have that confidence to express myself mm. and I was seeing people get ahead. Yeah. And I think one day it just occurred to me that you know what the problem is yet you're doing nothing about it. Right. You've heard about Toastmasters. It sounded funny, mm. <clears throat> but now you want to make a change. Right. So I popped on Google, looked for the closest Toastmasters club, right. drove there. <clears throat> and in the very first meeting, I was blown away. <laughs> I saw people delivering speeches with no cues, with no cards yeah. and getting evaluated, getting feedback right. on how they use their grammar, how they use their time, the use of pauses and filler words. And right. I decided that this is something that I want to be a part of. Mm. So there and then I signed up, paid the dues and became a member of a Toastmasters club. Right. After that, I realized that as much as I was improving, like we said in before, I realized that my problem was much deeper than others. <laughs> so it wasn't as much that I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. Right. But it was that fear. So I was I was feeling exactly what most people fear when they talk about stage fright or public speaking. Exactly, so yeah. your body begins to malfunction, mm. sweaty palms, itchy throat. I mean, yeah. people have different... I think my, my unique thing was that I would start to sweat in my <laughs> eyebrows. And when you're trying to speak and you're sweating from your eyebrows, yeah. that's really uncomfortable. Yeah. So I knew that I needed a bit more practice than everyone else. And at the time, they were only meeting twice a month. So fortunately, my boss also came to me with an issue about how the department was doing well, yet whenever her managers went to present, they were bashed and scolded. Mm. And she couldn't get how you're being, you're doing well, yet you're being, you're allowing yourself to be bashed and scolded. And she could only tie it back to the fact that they were not presenting well. They did not know how to express themselves and show how a good story was really good. Mm. So I told her that I joined the Toastmasters Club. Maybe she needs to get them to join. Then she said, no, why don't we create one here? Mm. And so she taxed me with it. She got all the approvals and we created a Toastmasters Club in the bank, which I used to work. Right. And I became the president of that club. So now I was getting the chance to not only practice twice a month, but I interchanged the dates. And so I was getting to practice every single week because I knew that I was starting behind everyone else. And so I needed more practice just to even get to the level where I was average. And that is what eventually led me to be in the Toastmasters club. Then from there, I began to realize the benefits of Toastmasters outside of the club. Right. Because now I was more expressive in meetings. Mm -hmm. I was more able to communicate, articulate my thoughts. 
And all those times where I had something to say that I really didn't know how to use the words, it was becoming more fluent, more fluid. Yeah. And I think one thing Toastmasters also teaches you is where that fear comes from. My question is, is it just for like professional speakers or people who want to go into speaking or people who want to kind of, you know, build themselves, you know, professionally or actually build themselves in terms of, you know, networking and all of that? Do you think that uh, Toastmasters is open to all of that? That's a very good question. I would say that Toastmasters really is that umbrella for everything personal development. Okay. So as much as we say Toastmasters International is an organization to help people with their public speaking or leadership, there's so much more than that that Toastmasters offers. Right. In the sense that your reason for joining Toastmasters, even though may start from communication, ultimately it's headed somewhere right so you may want to be a better speaker so that you can present your brand in the way that is on demand right Mm. (laughs) but i may be yeah i may be joining toastmasters because i want to be able to communicate in a business setting right effectively to make the impact that i want right so both of us cannot have the same sort of one track path that we're on exactly and what toastmasters has done in recent time is to recognize that we all have different purposes or reasons why we are joining we all have different intentions for why we want to develop right and so even in ghana we have the new pathways curriculum which allows people to explore different paths so now there are 11 different paths where if you want to be more of an mc type of speaker right there's a path for you if i want to be more of a, a dynamic leader there's a path for me if somebody also wants to be the kind of person who is a, an effective coach mm. because they manage a small team and they need to be able to keep the team energized motivated there's a path for them yeah. and more and more you're beginning to see that like you had dr Susan on the channel people in high level executive positions are emerging from toastmasters right so we have the ceo of octane dc Mm. we also have the country manager for kenya airways also from toastmasters you're beginning to see high level executives emerging from there whereas in the past it was just people who wanted to be public speakers presenters and so now we're seeing more diverse diversity lots of students lots of entrepreneurs as well so Toastmasters in Ghana. Yeah. Okay. Um, if maybe a young person watching us yeah. uh, has heard of you, yeah. but uh, having gotten the opportunity to join, yeah. you know, uh, Toastmasters in Ghana, right? What do I have to do if I've heard of it and I want to get more information about it? What do I have to do? Okay. So it's easy to... to find out more mm. right now you can just go on google and type as you said toastmasters in ghana and yeah. it will give you the website right. currently there are about 26 clubs in ghana that you can join wow. and there's definitely going to be one that's really close to you yeah. so all you need to do is go to google toastmasters in ghana it will give you the site it gives you the site has this unique thing where it shows you toastmasters clubs that are close to you or right. within your vicinity okay and all you need to do is call the number that is under the club that you choose mm. and it, the person will give you the meeting invite right right what you can do or what I advise that most people do is that you attend, you visit several club meetings okay. because every club has its own sort of atmosphere and vibe yeah. and you want to determine which one best suits you. Maybe mm. you are looking for an older audience. Yeah. So you want people who are more, more have more gravitas, mm. who are older, more mature, or you want a younger audience where you still have that fun entertaining vibe exactly, but you're yeah. also improving mm. some also want a mix of the two mm. so i'd advise that you at least visit three clubs and decide which one is best for you before you decide to pay dues or commit to the club but it's really easy now because a lot of the clubs the meetings have been moved online yeah. so once you call the number that is on the website you simply get given a link and you can join the meeting anytime mm. you can join multiple meetings to decide which one best suits you right right mm. okay guys so uh, this has been brand on demand and we have been talking about developing your personal and professional self or brand with toastmasters in ghana um and i have been talking to uh toastmaster jeremy uh, <laughs> <laughs> toastmaster jeremy we'll be going into uh your personal brand and you know uh mm. your role at uh Jumo Ghana Limited, yeah. and I will also be going into um, you know how young people can develop you know and build their personal and professional careers yeah. with Toastmasters in Ghana, right? So um, let's bring it home, right? Uh, just got out of the university. I'm a young graduate. Uh, I want to be able to connect more. I want to be able to kind of you know be in places where uh, I can articulate myself. I can you know put my ideas out there for people to kind of you know buy into it and all of that i can also attract some you know um potential employers as well Mm. and 
I discovered Toastmasters yeah. as, a, as a great avenue to kind of um, build myself, my personal brand and all of that. Okay, now I'm in Toastmasters, right? And uh, I'm beginning to see progress and all of that. Okay, how can I use the trainings and the you know development and everything that I'm getting from Toastmasters you know, to help build myself in real life? Because there's a notion that Toastmasters is all about, you know, um, just come, we give you table topics, you tell us what you think, we, you know, uh, there's an art counter, we, you know, kind of mark all your mistakes and <laughs> all of that, you know, how can I apply that to real life? Because in real life, it's different, mm. you know, in real life, it's different. Because if you don't, if you start, if you stand on a stage where there are 30,000 people in the audience, yeah. You know, how is that going to feel or how do you apply that from the learnings from Toastmasters in real life? That's a really good question. Mm. And I'm, I think I'm discovering that there's so many notions that people have about Toastmasters. Yeah, yeah, I have, I have some, I have some more. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I had, I had that initially, but because I've been there so long, they, mm. they probably gone. I think that it all starts first with what you want from your personal life. Yeah. Once you're able to identify that I probably want to achieve this particular thing. Right. And you have that goal. It makes it so much easier to transition from what you're learning in Toastmasters into right. that. Mm. So Toastmasters, yes, gives you a platform to practice the speaking, gives you um, feedback and evaluation. Yeah. But if it's not headed in any direction, then you're basically flying blind. Mm. So you be, you need to understand. So for example, if it's your, you're in Toastmasters, but you also have a career and yeah. you decide that I want to become, I want to get confirmed in the next one year. I want to become a manager in the next one year. That is the goal. Then you identify the gaps between where you are now and where you want to be. Mm. Ultimately, a lot of people understand that communication and leadership is one of the key things. It's one of those soft skills that people don't really, they don't even know how to tell you that the reason you're not going for is because you're not, you don't really exactly. speak well. Yeah. So you have to have that honest introspection and determine if that is one of the skills gaps that you have. Mm. And then it makes it so much easier for you to know how to bring in the things you're learning from Toastmasters into right, that. Right. So let me quote two people here. So one of my mentors, I like to call him my role models, right. says that the extent to which you will succeed or the your ability to communicate or the lack of it will mm. most often determine the extent to which you succeed or not. Okay. And it's very true because whether you are going through interviews, mm. you have to speak. When you are selling a brand or a product, you have to communicate. Exactly. Your ability to negotiate and persuade people is all communication. Right. Even in your relationships, whether somebody is going to like you or not is really heavily dependent on how you speak to them. Yeah. So you need you realize that your ability to communicate has so much impact in so many facets of your life mm. that you your how your initiative to improve that aspect of your life it's very key to other parts. But beyond that, Toastmasters also teaches you leadership. Right. right? The unique way that Toastmasters teaches leadership is the fact that everybody is doing all the work they're doing in Toastmasters voluntarily, yeah. right? Nobody is going to pay you for that. Mm. It's very difficult to motivate and get people to do things that they're not getting paid for. Yeah. So if you're able to find innovative ways of getting people, motivating them, persuading them, empathizing and understanding that these are this person's motivation. This is the reason why Mikey ticks this way. Yeah. If you're able to do that, then once you get into the work setting where people are actually paid to do their work, it becomes so much easier, right? right? And Toastmasters also teaches you things like sticking to time. Mm. So you say, I'll be here at this time and you're actually there. Yeah. You, you, you know how to limit your speaking so that you're not going on and on. Exactly. And you're able to keep it within the measured or uh, the time allotted to you. Mm -hmm. Also, the mentorship, and there's so much that can be said about mentorship. I think one of the things that I learned very recently about mentorship is this concept of reverse mentorship, right. where most of the time we are used to seeing the older generation passing mm -hmm. our knowledge to the younger generation. Right. But reverse mentorship is because in today's age, technology is changing so rapidly that, right. for example, for me, there's so much that I can learn from you, mm. even though we are sort of like one generation apart. Right. And we're beginning to see that. When I was in the bank, I was assigned as a reverse mentor for one of the managing directors because right. as much as he was talking about mobile money, Telegram, the apps, he had <laughs> yeah. not, never actually used them exactly. and had no idea how to use them. So in that reverse mentorship, we are beginning to see that the older generation also has a lot to learn from the younger generation. Right. And in that relationship, there's that flow of, of information and both of them are able to grow. Mm. So it's not only the mentor who 
has gone the way, knows the way, and can show you the way. Yeah. Now you are beginning to find that the, even the younger generation has a lot that they can teach the older generation mm-hmm. in this whole industry that is so, sort of new and leveling the playing ground. Right. So Toastmasters offers you a lot outside of the club setting. Wow, that's interesting to know. Is Toastmasters for everybody? I would like to think so. <laughs> I would say that Toastmasters is for everyone mm. or anyone mm. who is interested in self development, right. personal growth, mm. and simply wants to improve. There are people who come to Toastmasters just because they enjoy the community of people. Right. There's something about being on in a group of people who are on the same journey as you are. So even if your goal is not really because you want to become that elite speaker or that elite leader, maybe you have made it in life. You really don't need... Yeah. You've made it despite any of these things. People come there because of the community. It's a really brilliant network of people. Right. There's nothing like people who are trying to improve all within the same space, mm. leveraging off of each other's energies. It's something that people seem to enjoy. It's something that it took me a while to get into it because I'm sure we share that similar thing where yeah. you go to some place for a purpose and once the purpose is done, you want to leave. Exactly. But you don't realize that it's those informal conversations that you have before the club, after the club meetings mm. that build a kind of relationships that when you realize that you need help in a particular area, then you begin to know that, oh, for some reason... I know a Toastmaster who is in the police. I know a Toastmaster who is in the hospital, in the military. Then you begin to say, well, my network is actually quite diverse. Mm -hmm. And it's just because we are all coming together in this unique space of like-minded people. So Toastmasters is for anyone who wants to improve, wants a good company of people who are on on the same journey as them. Mm -hmm. And if you just want cool people to hang around, (laughs) Toastmasters is is really for you. If you just want cool people to hang around. Right, guys. So if you just want some cool people to hang out with, (laughs) then Toastmasters will be your best bet. Uh, I think, yeah, like uh, Toastmaster Jeremy rightly said, you guys can check out uh, Google, right? We can just Google Toastmasters in Ghana. Yeah. And then we can have all the information uh, we need from uh, the website right there. Hello and welcome to Brand On Demand, Demand. the only podcast dedicated to creative entrepreneurs and helping them grow their brands with your host, Brand Guy Mikey. Okay, this one says, um, how has it been working with a female boss? Have you ever had a female boss? Yes, I have. How has it been working with a female <laughs> boss? Like I said, these are random questions. They might not make sense, but they are random questions. <laughs> I feel like somebody deliberately asked me to ask that question. 